Hey there, today we're going to look at odd note grouping patterns and I'm going to talk about a Dave Holland concept and also we're going to try to apply all this to the tune Impressions by John Coltrane that I just uh, played a little bit over there at in the beginning. So in a previous lesson I talked about patterns, using patterns in your soloing and also using patterns the importance of knowing patterns and practicing patterns and all that. One thing that comes up all the time when you talk about patterns in soloing is that they're boring because it's so repetitive and, and uh, predictable. So there's a way to avoid that and that is by using odd note groupings. So basically five notes, for example, instead of four and so on. So one thing we can do to create odd note groupings is to play just a scalar sequence. So just go up the scale, right? But do five notes, one, two, three, four, five, then start at the next scale degree. So I'll give you an example. So if I play that over a 4-4 four, four meter, it sounds different every time, right? If I play a four note group, like I don't know, any four note grouping, It's very repetitive and boring. Nothing is happening. Nothing is changing. Well, but as soon as I make a five note group, for example, then all of a sudden it becomes different and the, there is an element of variation uh, all of a sudden. I could of course play that five note as a quintuplet. And if I play it as a quintuplet, uh, it's the same thing, nothing happens really. So it's only when I use an odd note grouping over a even meter that it becomes interesting. So. Before I move on and give you the Dave Holland concept and uh, how to apply all this to impressions, I'll just give you a few more ideas on how you can come up with odd note grouping patterns. You could do this, for example, play a triad up and down. That's five notes, one, two, three, four, five. Then you go up the scale, right? Now uh, we need to find a way to apply this to our playing, our soloing. And the problem is here, I think that it's already pretty hard to do this. So if you try to play patterns like I just showed you over a standard, like a tricky standard, like, I don't know, all the things you are or something, unless you're super comfortable playing all the things you are or a tune like that, I would suggest simplifying. So take a tune that has less changes so that you don't have to think about the changes. 
that you can focus on the rhythm, right? Uh, we also need to maybe wait with the patterns and just stay in one grouping. I'll show you what I mean. For example, take a very simple lick or a pattern, or a, well, it's not a pattern, just a, a five note grouping. Those are five notes, kind of like a blue scale thing. Okay, and then uh, you also need to consider how you're accenting with the pick, right? Or however you're playing. I'll show you what I mean. One thing is you can do is to emphasize every one. So So if I do that without the metronome, you can still hear the beat, hopefully. Let's say I want to play that over impressions. I get my iReal book and I just try to play it, see what happens. So it's a little bit uh, uh, weird, right? So what we need to do, because right now we're playing it as a cross rhythm. I've also talked about that in previous lessons. So I'm repeating the phrase, it starts over after five bars, which makes it kind of tricky to keep track or on where you are in the four. So that's, that's another thing to work on, cross rhythms. That's not what we're working on here. I want to get to that Dave Holland concept. So we want to apply this to a group of four bars. We tend to feel music in groups of four, or at least here in this part of the world. I don't know why that is, and that's a topic for another lesson and somebody else to cover that. But uh, we definitely feel music in groups of four. So what we need to do is we need to take this phrase and just play it until we've played four bars. Then we just edit it and cut out the last bar. And that leaves us with two leftover notes. Let me demonstrate. So it is a little bit weird, and some of you are wondering why the hell are we doing this? We're trying to expand our feeling of odd note groupings so that we can play patterns with odd note groupings in a more natural way. We need to program ourselves, I think. It's not gonna just happen unless you have some kind of special talent. We need to work on it. So that's what we're trying to do now. Here is the thing that I saw Dave Holland talk about. I saw him in the clinic once. I, I don't know if he, if, if he ever wrote this down, if he has some book out or whatever. Maybe some of you know. Please let me know if you do. But what he said is that those two leftover notes or whatever you want to call them, now we put them at the end of the four bar phrase. That means that there are many other places we can put that leftover uh, two notes. So in the beginning, for example. Mm -hmm. 
right? And I know that drummers work on this. I've never seen this concept in any jazz method book, except for a drummer. He showed me a drummer method book where they work. They seem to be working on this all the time. So I think we should as well. So I'll demonstrate what it sounds like if I start with the two leftover notes. get the idea. Now, how many more places can we put that leftover two notes? Well, we can try to put it after the first five grouping, like... So I'm just going to play a little bit and demonstrate and put those two leftover notes in random different places. and. Uh, Hopefully, you will see what that sounds like. I think what happens there is I start to think in a different way. I'm starting to think about variation, rhythmic variation. It becomes the, the focus of my attention rather than thinking about what notes I'm playing or how fast I'm playing or all that. I'm, I'm focusing on rhythmic variation, which is a good place to be. It's a good uh, headspace to be in when you're playing, right? So. It expands your rhythmic uh, understanding so that when the drummer does something crazy, it's not going to throw you off if you have practiced on this kind of stuff, even though it seems kind of weird, I guess. But ultimately, you want to be able to take all that stuff that we just did right now and go back to the more advanced patterns and being able to play patterns using this kind of editing that I just did. Now that's a little bit more uh, a challenge, right? So let's go back to that first uh, pattern I did. We're gonna try to do something similar with that. So instead of five, 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 two, I'm gonna do five, 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 seven which also equals 32 notes, which is what we're supposed to, uh, it's supposed to add up to, right? Because it's a four bar phrase of eight notes. That means 32 notes. So we're dividing them in groups of five and one group of seven. Four, five, one, two, three, 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 four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, So that, uh, now I kind of added that kind of concept, the Dave Holland concept to the pattern I was playing in the beginning. And now I shall play that over impressions. Bear with me. up a little bit there it doesn't uh, matter that much so imagine if you can do that but more freely and not being stuck in a pattern like that and you can just kind of play any pattern that would be 
a pretty high level of playing. So I hope that this wasn't too confusing and I hope that you got something out of it. And as usual, this stuff is in PDF form on my Patreon page for my patrons. And again, I thank you and I shall see you next time.